Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Software Testing. My name is Daniel Knott and I'm happy that you're here today. Today's video is about drum rolls, mobile test automation tools in 2022. If you're in mobile testing, working as a mobile tester, or you are a team lead, for example, that has to, to decide uh, on, the, on the automation strategy for your mobile apps, being it a native app, being it a hybrid app, or being it a, a web app, there are like a plenty of tools out there that you can use in order to automate your app under test. And this video should give you an insight on which tools are on the market and which tools you can evaluate and see if they fit to your tech stack and if they fit into your um, development environment. So let's take a look. So stop. Before we start with automation, uh, I have to say a few points because I have seen in the past people failing with automation so many times because they just blindly blindly started with automation. So they just Googled, okay, mobile test automation. They saw the first tool there, the best ranked tool. They do some cross checks on the tool and they blindly start with automation. This is a big mistake, right? So take a step back, take some time and make a plan because that's really important when you want to work with mobile test automation or with test automation in general, because without a plan, you will not have success with your automation. So that's important. Sit down together with your team and, and outline the, the architecture, for example, what you want to automate with which tool on which level, because you cannot use um, um, one tool to automate everything, right? So there's always a combination of tools. So the first thing that you should do uh, before you start Googling or and use any other search engine is to take a look at your tech stack. So this is important. Um, take a look at your architecture. So what are the tools that you're using? What are the technologies um, that you have in the development team? And based on that information, so basically you can also write it down and use it while uh, searching for the tools to see if the tools are supporting, for example, uh, the different technologies out there or that you're using. Um, yeah, this is this is also what I just mentioned is to collaborate with the developers in the team and maybe also with the architecture department if you have one in the company to 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 um, yeah to share some knowledge about testing activities that you would like to do and also to to get some insights on for example CI/CD pipelines what are you using for that and how can you make sure that the tool that you would like to choose fit into that category. Um, first, yeah, this is something that I slightly mentioned. There is no single automation solution out there. So we, we will not find the single tool that you can use for mobile that covers all your needs and aspects when you what you want to do with it. So there's no single um, tool out there. It's always a combination of tools that's common. That's also what I've seen in the past um, 13 years now that I'm in software testing, especially in mobile testing, is there's always a combination of tools that you have to use in order to get a good overview on the quality of your product. And yeah, you should start simple. This is also something that I usually tell people and also our clients when they would like to start with automation in general. It's not really something that, that um, is for mobile. It's also in general with automation, start simple. Think about use cases that you would like to automate and then see how easy it is to, be, uh, to automate these use cases. And then from there, go bigger and then see how it helps you, gives you valuable insights and free up your time for the real testing. So mobile test automation. Um, as I already said, there are like many tools available on the market. So that's why I also made this video for you to give you an, an update on the 2022 tools that uh, from my point of view are worth looking at. Um, there are many paid versions and many open source versions out there as well. So this is something that you should keep in mind and you should also put into your um, question list, for example, for the evaluation and also for your tech stack. Are you completely relying on open source software? That's great. There are a lot of tools out there. Or um, you maybe have a contract with, with a vendor, with a device or with a software vendor. Uh, maybe this vendor also offers already some automation solutions, which can be uh, beneficial for you. Um, I, what, however, I highly recommend usually to start with open source frameworks on mobile because um, they really um, support all the native um, implementations on, on Apple and Google. And this, this is really a good integration into the system. And also for you to know that many of the paid solutions out there 
mainly use the open source frameworks and just extend them with new functionality, being it monitoring, reporting. Of course, some really nice features that can be useful for you, but might be not the, um, the key, the key um, um, point for, for selecting a specific tool. So just to find a tool to try them out, I recommend you to use the open, uh, the open source one. Um, this is what I already said, they offer ad additional features on top. And um, this video, as I already said, focus on open source tools for native apps. But this is also something these tools that I, um, I will talk about in a second can also be used for um, hybrid apps, for example, and to some extent also for web apps, for mobile web apps in the browser. So let's take a look on the iOS side. So we start with XC test or XC UI test from Apple. So it's a unit testing, performance and UI testing tool that has been developed by Apple and is part of the Xcode environment. Yeah. So XC test can be used for unit testing. So it's a plain unit testing uh, framework that can be used uh, with um, by your developers. And XCUI test, as the name already suggests, is for UI testing. So you can really use some inter UI interaction and to test the app how a user would like to, to would, would do it. Um, the big benefit here, um, it's well integrated um, to Xcode because it, it's part of the Xcode development suite. So whenever you download Xcode and you have installed it, you have also basically for free XC test and XUI test, and you can directly start from there. Um, it's really easy to learn for developers. That's great. It's also accepted by developers. This is also sometimes important to have so that developers really support the tool and they also would like to work with the tool. It's written Objective-C and Swift. Um, it can execute the tests in simulators and on real devices, which is also important to know. And it's also um, impossible to do a remote execution. So for example, on browser stack or source labs or any other uh, cloud provider out there can be connected with, with the solution and can be also then used um, for your execution. I put a link here as well in the video, but also down in the video description, you find all the information uh, on the tools today for your further reading and for further investigation. So what is uh, out there as well is Earl Grey 2.0. Um, it's also a native, a native iOS UI automation tool. It's based on um, Earl Grey, the initial version, and uh, with use XUI test. So it's a bit of a combination, but it's a UI, UI testing tool. Um, it has been developed by Google uh, and then made open source. So that's really great. So Google is using this tool, for example, to automate their YouTube app on iOS or their calendar app, for example. Uh, this is, has been used by, by Google as well. Oh yeah, I already said that. Um, um, Alcray offers more matchers as X, XUI tests. So Google extended the matchers that you have in XUI test for, for, your, um, yeah, for your usage. And it's, it's great to see that Google is contributing to the tool and is also making this available to the community. Um, it also offers a pixel by pixel check for UI elements. It's really nice. So you can do a screen comparison, for example, to check if design elements have, have moved around. Um, it offers an automatic synchronization with animations and more. This is something that XUI test is not offering at the moment. So this is something Earl Grey puts on top and it might be interesting for you. Again, here's the link. So let's come to Android. So first of all, we have JUnit, which should be not a big of a uh, surprise to you. It's the de facto standard uh, app um, framework for unit testing for Java application, including Android apps. So yeah, it's developer friendly, it's easy integrated into the project. Um, it's there since ages and it, it's, it's an established standard, as I already said. Uh, it's really fast in execution, so it just executes thousands of unit tests in some seconds. And um, since the JUnit 5 version, it also usable with Kotlin, which is great. So you can use JUnit with in combination with Kotlin to write your unit test as you have done before on Android with Java. And there's the link. So let's take a look at RoboElectric on Android. Uh, it's another unit testing framework for Android. So you have you can decide which one to choose. Uh, it runs the test inside a JVM 
without the need of an emulator. So everything that the whole test execution uh, hen, um, is happening in the JVM. So it's much faster than like starting an emulator on Android, waiting until the emul emulator is, is up and running, and then you can uh, execute your testing. Everything is in JVM, which makes it really fast. Um, it's again, developer friendly, easy to integrate into a project and into Android Studio, for example. It's fast in execution and there's the link. So take a look. Um, we have another tool called UI Automator. It's a use, you can use it for UI test automation for Android. Um, it's able to automate across different apps. This is really nice. So you can, um, for example, say you have an app that uh, receives a push notification and you want to test the push notification, for example. And if you tap on a push notification, of course, it opens the app. And, and um, there you can also um, enter the push notification from the UI Automator, go into your app, do some testing activities. And of course, uh, and for example, if your app um, offers, an, let's say, calendar export um, of some data, you can trigger the export in the app. And then with your Automator, you can close the app under test and open the native calendar and see if the import was successful, for example. This is great. And this is nothing that you can do with the other tools coming in a second. Um, it uses the Android J unit runner as a test runner. It's an easy uh, to set up and use from Android Studio. It's again well integrated in the whole ecosystem. It can execute on, on emulators and real devices, which is important to know. Um, and yeah, that's up to you where you want to execute the tests. And here's the link again. It's part of the developerandroid.com training section. Let's take a look at Espresso. It's not a drink, it's a nice coffee though, but uh, Espresso is a tool, um, UI automation tool, uh, again, developed by Google and provided uh, to the community. Um, it's an open source framework. Uh, it's completely targeting developers to write reliable UI tests. So that's the main focus of the tool. It's really, really um, developer focus, really developer centric, and therefore it's also well established and well, um, well accepted by developers, right? It offers lots of measures, actions, and assertion commands that you can trigger with Espresso to actually check the, the, the current view, for example. It has a really fast execution emulators and in, in, in real devices. And again, it's really well integrated into Android Studio. There is a link for you. Last but not least, um, there is a test automation tool available that can cover both. And uh, this is also not a big surprise, right? It's, it's Appium. So Appium is the most used UI test automation tool for iOS and Android. It's from my point of view, it's the de facto standard when you would like to implement uh, mobile automation for iOS or Android. And yeah, you should take a look. It supports multiple programming languages, which is really nice. So you don't need to write your tests in um, Swift or in Kotlin. You can also use another language, maybe Python, for example, or C Sharp or just Java. So you can execute, uh, you can write a test with, with, a, with a programming language and Appium makes sure that the test execution happens either on iOS or on Android. Um, it supports uh, native, hybrid and web apps. This is really nice. Um, it's also, um, it's not a pro, but it's an important news um, that yeah, I would like to give you here. Um, it has no control or access to the underlying O operating system APIs. So you cannot access specific APIs um, provided by the operating system, uh, not yeah, by the operating system, um, because it's not a native tool provided by Google or by iOS. So you have to rely on the, the Appium uh, matchers and, and, and commands that you can use in order to automate, which is okay, which is totally fine, but just for you to know. Uh, it's really easy to write a test. As I said, you can pick your programming language and write it to tests as you would like to have. Um, on the other side though, the, the setup is, is a bit more complex and requires some special hardware. And with special hardware, I mean it's, you have to have a Mac, um, a Mac OS for example, especially if you would like to automate on iOS. iOS automation is completely connected to the Mac um, ecosystem. So you cannot use a Windows or Linux machine in order to automate iOS apps. So if you're just on Android, of course, you can use um, an, an, an other um, operating system like Windows, but of course not with Appium. Uh, you can use for, for Espresso, for JUnit, you can use Windows, but Appium really requires um, Mac, Mac software. 
The good thing is it has a really strong community. So you find lots of uh, comments and tutorials out there on how to install Appium, how to use it in the best way, best practices, what to do and what not to do. So um, use your search engine and just browse for Appium. You will find lots of information. And there's the link. So let's take a look at the summary of this video today. So first of all, there is no silver bullet. Uh, as you have seen, I've shown you, uh, presented you like six, I think it was six tools that you can pick from on iOS and Android. So there are some tools focusing on the unit level, some of them focusing on the on the end-to-end -end, uh, user, um, user um, level, but there's also something in between. So if you would like to do some API tests, you can use um, also, for example, Postman for test um, automation, the API level. This is also possible, but I left this out because it's not um, really connected um, directly to iOS or Android. Um, take some time to evaluate the tools. So not just say, okay, Appium is the, is the way to go because it's the de facto standard at the moment. Maybe other tools working um, working much better for you. For example, use just Espresso on iOS, uh, on Android and just the XUI test on the iOS side. If this is fine working for you, then that's the way to go. But take some time to evaluate the tools. Um, yeah, I said it in the beginning, select the tools that fit into your tech stack and environment. Don't do just, uh, don't use just the tool because others are using it. Check if it, it really fits into your tech stack. Um, also automation is a team effort. So it should not be like only your responsibility as a software tester, but it's a team effort. And I completely see developers here also in charge of writing, for example, Appium tests or any other tests that have to be uh, written in a project. Um, automation should be done on different layers. I also said it, unit level, API level, um, then also the end-to-end -end level. Maybe you could do also some, some automation on the, on the backend, on the backend system, not on the app unit level, but on the backend server side um, um, that um, gets the requests and sends the response to the app. Also something that you should keep in mind and should be automated, uh, tested. Combine test automation tools. Um, I, I, I think this is clear now to use different tools for, for automation on mobile. Um, also important is to integrate it into your CI CD pipeline because then you can execute it, uh, execute them on, um, for example, on, on a build trigger or on a push to uh, a certain feature branch, for example, or a master branch. You can trigger the automation or in nightly builds, of course. And I said it again in the beginning, really start simple because that's important if you don't start or don't start too complex because you you it's highly that you would like that you will fail because it's it's overwhelming the different tools the setup the configuration the integration into the pipeline is, is sometimes um, a lot of work and that's why you should start simple take the take time to define your use cases that you would like to automate and then start from there and with that i would say um, thank you I hope you liked the video of today. If so, leave me a thumbs up. And if you would like to support me, leave a subscription and see you soon and bye bye.